I'm going to pass things over to Denise. Thank you, Emily, and welcome everyone to today's webinar on delivering content online from a variety of our curricula to teach human growth and development topics. Now, we know that we are living in very, very different times than we were a few months ago, and many of you have been tasked with teaching uh, students um, at home. So today we hope to give you just a few ideas uh, for taking some of the lessons, the activities, the curricula that usually come with our simulators and models, but um, taking these activities and using them in this online delivery format. So here are the three different curricula that you have access to. Actually, you have access to many, many more, and that'll be on the next slide. But um, each of these curricula has a different focus. And we're actually going to be taking and highlighting a lesson from each of these three different curricula today in our webinar. We're going to be highlighting the lessons and the activities from each and sharing ways that you could actually share the content and teach this content online. Now, each of our lessons um, follow the same lesson template. We have three sections in all of our lessons. Um, so all of the human growth and development curricula lessons follow this template. The first section that when you open a lesson will be the focus section. This is the first five to 10 minutes of a lesson and it's usually a short and engaging way of capturing students attention and getting them interested in the content. Then we move on to the learn section and this is typically the middle oh, 30 minutes or so and this will be how we teach the main objectives of a lesson. And then we usually end every lesson with some kind of a summary or review activity to review those cue points and assess um, if they've learned the main objectives. It could be something like a quiz or a key question, or it could even be something else. But once you've um, looked at the layout of one lesson, you will notice that they all pretty much follow the same format. Now, before we begin with our first lesson today, I wanted to share this access site with you. This, is, this link is our company response to the coronavirus. We have made all of our curricula and product guides available as a resource for every product that we have. So the screenshot on the right shows you where to access fact-specific resources at that link. You simply scroll down to where it says Family and Consumer Sciences. And then uh, to get to the reproduction and pregnancy curricula that we'll be highlighting today, you just click on the individual products you're interested in, and it takes you right to the curricula that goes along with that. So again, today we're gonna highlight just three that you have access to, but because we have so much, we urge you to check them all out and see what we've got there at that link. So now we're gonna take a look at a lesson from our curriculum that usually accompanies our Human Reproductive Systems Kit. The lesson we're gonna highlight the content and the activities from conception to the first four weeks of gestation. Now, even if you don't have the Human Reproductive Systems Kit or our embryonic development model, there is still value in the activities and the content provided with this lesson. So here are the three parts to the lesson that we referred to earlier. We're gonna take a look at each part and talk about how could each part be adapted to an online format. So it starts out with that short focus activity with myth conceptions. Um, myth, uh, uh, it might be urban myths and, and legends and things that uh, students might think are true about pregnancy but aren't sure. Uh, the middle section, we're going to be talking all about the embryonic uh, development stages, again, from fertilization all the way to the first four weeks. There's uh, several different things we'll do there. And then the summary review is reviewing those stages again at the end of the lesson. Now, um, the first one that we're going to focus on, again, is our focus section, and that's this myth conceptions activity. So this is an activity that engages students discovering common things that they may have heard that they think maybe are wacky about how to prevent pregnancy. For example, some people might say, if a girl jumps up and down after sex, she won't get pregnant. Well, for each idea listed in this part of the lesson, students will research the important truth or understanding involved. For example, jumping up and down belief is an attempt to keep the sperm from meeting the egg, which invites an opportunity to discuss actual ways of keeping the sperm from meeting the egg, such as barrier methods. So you'll give students access to the myth conceptions handout for the curriculum, and we've got that on the screen in front of you. Uh, you could post it in your LMS system, you could save it as a PDF, and you could even email it out to get it to your students if you had to. There are eight misconceptions on the left-hand side of the sheet. Students are tasked with coming up with the reality on the right-hand column. So you could kick this off as an independent online research assignment that they have to complete and turn in. 
um, you have the answer key available to you in the curriculum. So once they turn it in, you could send them the answer key so that they have the correct information to compare it with if you wanted to. Um, you'd want to discuss with your students the importance of finding out what's true and what's not true about these items. How can they discern the truth from fiction, especially as they make decisions regarding health, health and sexuality? Misinformation could lead to a lifetime of responsibility if they're not ready to become a teen parent. So um, also, I did find one good video that could be viewed by students about OBGYN or from OBGYNs that debunked 25 pregnancy myths. So that the content in that 20 minute video uh, goes very nicely with this kickoff uh, activity in this lesson. So um, you have access to that link um, if you choose to use it, but it's only 20 minutes and I thought it uh, could be, could be uh, valuable if you wanted to post it on your LMS system for your students. The next part of the lesson gets into all of the various stages of embryonic development from conception through the first four weeks of development. Now you would first give your students access to the stages of embryonic development handout. This could be uploaded to an LMS system or somehow sent to students electronically. They will need to print it out because they're gonna draw each stage of development in the box provided. Now if students don't have a printer, they could create a drawing for each stage on another piece of paper, label it, take a photo and send it to you. So they could do that too. Um, this part of the lesson also directs you to show students the biology of prenatal development DVD. Now, when you purchase the kit, it comes with that. But however, we have found that if there, we have found a website where you can go to this DVD and there are certain sections um, and it has clips that are available for free for each stage of development. So this was just a great find that goes along with this. So we've got the link there on the screen for you. And that website is loaded with free information. Now, specific to this DVD, if you scroll down on that, um, you can click on movie clips from the biology of prenatal development DVD. You can find images. Um, there's a DVD documentation center that features the actual script that they used in 92 different languages. There's footnotes, references. Um, there's a multilingual illustrated DVD available. Um, all sorts of stuff. Um, so you can definitely use this, this uh, link and this website to augment um, the activity of the stages of embryonic development. So again, you'd give the students that handout um, and you could give them a certain time to research using a variety of sources, um, some of which could come from this website that's on the screen if you wanted to, to find out what embryonic development looks like at various stages. And then they would draw the zygote or what the embryo looks like in the boxes provided. Now, if you'd like to give your students even more choices for watching video clips about the first four weeks, here are a few other good ones that I found on YouTube. Now, these clips could be uploaded into an LMS system to watch or posted as material in Google Classroom. Um, this should give your students plenty of visual material in order to be able to complete that stages of embryonic development handout. Now, these four YouTube videos are excellent and they're also very, uh, fairly short, the longest one being around eight minutes. I think the graphics and the photography in them are really excellent, um, but there are many, many more than just this. This is just to show you that you can find this type of resource um, pretty easily, um, you know, bringing these stages of, of uh, human development to life. Now, in the facilitator instructions, you have a page of background information that you can also share with students if you'd like to. Uh, to do that, you could take a screenshot or you could use a snipping tool to uh, post the information as a PDF um, for students to review on their own as well. Then the last part of the lesson will review the stages of development from conception through those first four weeks. Now you have access to the slides and I've got the, the snapshot um, up on the screen for you. Um, and you can also have students view them on their own if you'd like to. Or another thing you could do is uh, you could record your own video using the extensive notes that are in the facilitator instructions that go with each slide. So you could create your own video and post that for students as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can get this information out to them. Now in this lesson, you also have an image of the embryonic development model that is a part of the usual kit that you would have. Now, you probably don't have access to this model in order to share the information, but still, you could use this shot um, in the curriculum to share it with students so they could still, it would be like having the model in front of them where they would still get that visual of all of the um, stages of embryonic development that that model shows. 
So that is the first lesson that we wanted to share with you today. Um, now we're going to take a look at a lesson from our curriculum that usually accompanies our fetal development kit. Now this focuses on the development of the fetus from month to month. So uh, this is a very robust lesson and it actually has 10 different activities in it. Now I'm going to be highlighting just a couple of them today, but remember you have access to the whole works if you want and you could do them all if you chose to. Um, the focus activity here kicks the lesson off with learning about the size of the fetus by month. Um, there's going to be a series of activities that relate to fetal development and pregnancy. I'm going to highlight two that you can deliver online and then the lesson ends with a short quiz that you could give on infant development. So a fun way to get your students to understand fetal development, you know, size of fetus month by month is to use comparable everyday objects. Now the approximate sizes are listed on the slide here in front of you. Um, this hands-on everyday object um, event will help students understand fetal development month to month. Uh, students are gonna be amazed when they see some of these objects for a comparison. And it's really awesome to think that, uh, you know, those young preemie babies who sometimes survive six, seven months and how tiny they are when you compare them to those everyday objects and that they live and thrive, it's amazing. Now you could do something like this a couple of different ways. You could give students the size by month if you wanted, and then they could gather nine items of similar size at home, label them by the month and take a photo and submit it to you. Or if you wanted to extend it, you could have the students research the size by month themselves and then do the part for finding the common objects of that size to identify and to compare with. So that's just a fun way to kick off this uh, fetal development lesson. Now, first of all, um, for the second part, you'll need to give students access to the trimester characteristics list um, that you'll find in this lesson. Now you could save this as a PDF, uh, you could post it to your LMS system, or in Google Classroom, you could put it as materials. Uh, students would need to print this out if they can, and they would cut each characteristic apart and make three piles, first, second, and third trimester. So students would need to decide which trimester each of these items belongs in. And then they make a table that has a column for each first, second, and third trimester, and they put the strip in the appropriate column. So upon completion, you know, they might have these taped or glued, they could scan it, they could take a photo, and they could turn that in. Now, alternatively, if they do not have access to printing it out, they could identify which trimester each characteristic falls within, and they could create their own table and simply type in the answer or even handwrite it on a sheet of paper. Um, the document could again be submitted to you, the instructor, upon completion. Students can research any of the characteristics they are unsure of. So doing this will also help them get to learn what happens in each trimester of development. The lesson also includes the following discussion questions, which you could turn into a written assignment to go with the activity. Some of these questions that you'll have in the lesson include, does one trimester have more characteristics than another? Which one? Which trimester is the most important? All three are equally important, but major organs and systems form mostly in the first trimester. Now you have the answer key provided to you um, on the screen above for the trimester development. So you'll have all that information. Um, it makes it very easy for you to deploy this as an activity. Another activity that's a part of the lesson is the focus on healthy eating during pregnancy. So you'd share this information with students. There's uh, heartburn and constipation are both physical discomforts of pregnancy. Some women also have a problem with unstable blood sugar during pregnancy. With this in mind to help relieve problems, many doctors recommend mothers eat frequent small meals throughout the day. The diet should include an increase in fiber, folic acid, and be high in protein, calcium, vitamin C, and iron. Beware of sugary, salty, or high processed foods as they can cause problems such as swelling, diabetes, and remember, the goal is not to gain an excessive amount of weight while pregnant. So you would share that information. And then using the healthy eating during pregnancy worksheet as a guide, you would have your students develop a daily menu using the healthy menu sheet. So you'll need to give students access to also, there's something, there's a handout called things to avoid during pregnancy as well. So an extension of this activity would be to assign students uh, to different types of diets, such as a lactose intolerant, vegetarian, limited budget income, gluten-free, et cetera. Students could submit a brief uh, slide presentation creating a one-week menu plan for this type of diet. So there's a lot of different things you can do with the healthy menu planning around pregnancy. 
The purpose of this final thing is the quiz, and that gives um, you a chance to review those main points from the lesson and give students the opportunity to think about what they have learned. You can post it as a PDF, or you could use your LMS or Google Docs quiz creator and format it as a convenient self-grading quiz. So the answers are provided to you in the lesson for your convenience. Um, so that takes you through a lot of the different things in the uh, prenatal development lesson. Now, here's an extension to it that we want to um, mention as well. Here are some additional resources and lessons that you have available to you on making good decisions during the prenatal development um, timeframe to ensure the most healthy outcome for newborn infants. If you have access to the, if you have access to the infants, the um, fetal alcohol syndrome baby or the drug affected baby, you could actually create your own video demonstrations to post uh, for students to see. Um, students are going to learn in these lessons that the conditions are completely preventable. The emphasis is placed on how substances travel from the mother to the baby in utero during development and what can happen if good decisions are not made. Prenatal development can irre irreversibly be impacted by drug and alcohol usage during pregnancy. So these lessons will analyze the influence of the usage and what that can have on infant growth and development. So even if you don't have these infant uh, simulators or demonstrators available, the content is available to you in the link we provided earlier. And it gives you a lot of different things that you could uh, share with your students. So our third lesson that we are going to take a look at today um, is uh, pregnancy symptoms and discomforts, which is a part of our understanding pregnancy curriculum that usually comes along with our pregnancy profile simulator. Um, you have access to the entire curriculum. This one actually has 12 lessons, which are loaded with activities, information, you've got slides and assessments that you can use and adapt to an online environment. Um, we know students will probably not have access to that pregnancy stimulation experience at home. However, we will be sharing an activity where students can create their, at home, their own at home pregnancy simulation experience with common objects found in their homes. So this lesson will start with a focus activity and it's uh, pregnancy symptoms, positive or negative. Then the middle section is how would I feel if and then it, the summarized one is uh, symptoms and discomforts, physical versus emotional. So um, all three of these parts of the lesson are designed to help students have the opportunity to identify pregnancy symptoms and consider the impact each would have on their life. So for this activity, you're going to give students access to the thing it's called the pregnancy symptoms and discomforts handouts, as well as a viewing slide six, which you see on the slide in front of you. Both can be saved as PDFs and posted on an LMS system or email to students. Now on the handout, you'd have your students personally evaluate whether each of these would be a positive or a negative effect in their life right now. You would have uh, participants or students identify which symptoms or discomforts would be most upsetting, pleasant or hardest to deal with at their age and why. For each symptom or discomfort listed, they would write their feelings or thoughts as to why it might be a positive or negative factor in their life right now. Now, after that, students would review the content on slide six, which is physical changes month by month, and they would learn the, the physical changes that occur monthly um, that the expectant mother is going through. Okay, now in this activity, students would have the opportunity to reflect on how they would feel if they themselves or their girlfriend or partner were pregnant right now. Students will need access to the how would I feel if um, I were pregnant now worksheet. This could be scanned and saved as a PDF or given to students to complete in whatever manner you're able to do that. Now, if possible, um, these are uh, great if you can use these res responses as a basis for a class discussion. Now, it's definitely more difficult to foster conversation when your students are remote. Uh, can you meet as a group via Zoom or other technology? Or can you pose each of these questions on a discussion thread or chat room on an LMS system of some sort? You know, see what works in your learning environment to, to foster discussion. Now, you could also expand the discussion to include the roles and responsibilities of parents. What are the needs of children? Can teenage parents provide for all these needs on a daily basis? Uh, another activity would be to, um, during the lesson, uh, your instructor, well, when you're, 
in school, they could bring in an expectant or a parent who's gone, who's been pregnant to address and talk about the physical and emotional changes of being pregnant. So how can you do this activity if students are online? Well, you could invite students to conduct their own interview and possibly even videotape or audio tape it and submit it um, to you. Um, they could um, even uh, get the questions and answers to you in writing from their interview. But there are a series of questions included in the lesson that you could post um, and you have access to and you could post as an assignment. So here are some of the things that the interview could cover. Um, you would have the person share physical experience of um, how these uh, changes um, occurred throughout the pregnancy, address physical and emotional challenges that they would physically or they would personally have experienced while being pregnant, um, have them also include the reactions of others to um, the physical body changes. You might even invite parents who have already had children to share their pregnancy experiences as well. Um, couples make a very interesting um, way of interviewing when you have both mom and dad share their perspectives. So um, your guests could share the following topics um, in an interview with a student, such as um, what were the first reactions upon learning of the pregnancy? Um, was it planned? How did they first tell or how did they first learn about what were their reactions? What physical or emotional changes did they experience? Any challenges or difficulties? Um, as the pregnancy progressed, what changes did they notice? Are there any fears about the birth or delivery that they experienced? How did they feel about um, how they would do as parents of a newborn? Um, do they feel they were physically, mentally, and financially ready to be parents? How do they view their role as a parent? What advice would they give to someone considering becoming a parent? And would this advice differ if someone were in their 20s or 30s versus in their teens? Um, so there's a lot of questions you have access to in that lesson for them to consider. Now, if you don't want to send them out to actually do any kind of an interview, another option could be to choose an interview with a teen parent or pregnant teen that are on YouTube. And there are actually dozens. Um, so I found one example here um, that's about nine minutes in length. That's a day in the life of a pregnant teen in high school. Now the purpose of this activity is to review the main pregnancy symptoms and discomforts and give students an opportunity to reflect on how one symptom might impact or cause another symptom, either physically or emotionally. You'd have your students use the pregnancy symptoms and discomforts worksheet to determine which of the symptoms or discomforts are physical and which are emotional. So they'd write P for physical and E for emotional. And you could post this as a reflection uh, question or you could post um, as uh, discussion questions, but how might one affect um, or be a cause for another in terms of the overall health of the pregnant mother? Now, here's another activity that you could do. It's called reaction stories. Have students write a fictitious story of their personal reaction upon getting a positive pregnancy test. This could be written from a male or female uh, point of view. Uh, what would your honest reaction be? Um, who would you tell first? Where or when would you tell them uh, what would you say before and after telling someone you tested positive? Uh, how do you think that they would feel? What would be your next plan of action? So um, also one more source of information about pregnancy symptoms, both physical and emotional, can be found on a wide variety of available pregnancy apps. And if you uh, search on your app store, just a few of the, uh, the most uh, prominent ones that come up are WebMD pregnancy, there's something called the bump, uh, what to expect. There's one called Pregnancy Tracker. One, I'm expecting a pregnancy assistant. There's one called Sprout, um, full term. So there's a lot of them out there, but um, many of them have uh, very good information that students could also have access to. Now, the lesson we're discussing here is a part of our pregnancy simulation experience. Now, we know students will not have access to your pregnancy profile simulator at this time at home, but they can still have a do-it-yourself pregnancy simulation at home um, that they could try. So first of all, one, one way to do it is to take a backpack. And because we have students, nearly all of them will have a backpack available and begin to fill it up to about 25 to 30 pounds. Now the goal is to fill up the space in the backpack representing average weight gain by the third trimester. So then you would have students wear it backwards so they can feel a difference in their center of gravity as you see in the picture in front of you. Or another thing you could do if you have these things, you could simply uh, fill a warm, uh, a, hot, a hot water bottle with warm water, beach ball, and wrap it up in a baby wrapper or something and wear it low on the abdomen. 
Uh, you could even use something like a medicine ball or an exercise ball that has some weight to it. And again, uh, they could wear it around their middle. And then when your students have these things on, have them do things from the lesson like tie their shoes, pick something up off the floor, sit and stand up from a chair, etc. This so this is how you could actually simulate that experience at home. Um, now we're going to take a look at the lesson information you have access to as well. Now I actually did find one video um, entitled Making an Empathy Bump at Do-It-Yourself Pregnancy and I have that link here. Um, you might find it useful. It's only, uh, it's less than two minutes long. Um, and then also um, part of the simulation experience when you have our simulator on is to wear it for at least 20 minutes. So I would, ex I would say to your students um, for the do-it-yourself one also, try to wear it a minimum of 20 minutes and then do the following tasks. And all of these are listed in the lesson as well. So the lessons we've highlighted today just happen to be rela relating to fetal development and pregnancy. However, we have many other curricula available that teach about related content in other ages across the lifespan. And I'd like to highlight a few of those that we have available for you. Um, first of all, you might be surprised to discover that we actually have a pretty robust curriculum tar targeting young people um, focusing on early puberty through late teens. We want to make sure we mention this because many of our uh, customers who are instructors just think of us as the baby company. So we have resources and lessons available that address this age and stage of human development as well. Um, we have activities that focus on relationships. Our Life Skills and Healthy Choices for Middle School Students curricula has information on physical, emotional, social, and intellectual development during puberty. Now, some of the activities in the lessons specifically deal, that deal with human development are um, things like a list of changes during puberty and adolescence, at least physical, mental, emotional, and social, um, human reproductive systems presentation, there's healthy relationships and effective communication strategies. So we have a lot of different things available to you in that curricula. We also have activities that focus on sexuality and sexual decision making in adolescence. We have um, a curriculum called Healthy Choices, Relationships, Sexuality, and Family Planning. And this is designed as a comprehensive sex ed curriculum for high school students. Uh, some of the topics you can explore lessons on are peer pressure, that speak to the impact of the emotional and social growth and development at this time of life. Um, there's a lesson on the influence that the media can have on an individual's growth. We have a communication, self-esteem, and healthy relationships lessons that are explored and discussions regarding the impact of these things on the social and emotional development of teens um, as well. And students actually can role play various scenarios to learn refusal skills and how to positively handle peer pressure. So there's a lot in that curricula that you could take a look at. Now this next stage of human development, we'd like to point out that we have available our resources in those parenting years of young adulthood. Um, now as an adult who becomes a parent, that will have an enormous impact on the growth and development of their children and in their relationship. So we have um, lessons and information that relate to that uh, stage of development as well. We have a parenting curriculum we have that focuses on zero to age three children. We have a basic infant care that is childcare skills related. Um, you also have access to our shaken baby, our choking baby and our CPR infant curricula as well. Um, the parenting curriculum that accompanies the real care baby um, has several lessons that speak to the influence and impact of parents on the development of the child. For example, we have one parenting styles lesson where students take a self quiz and they discover which type of parenting style most closely matches their answers. And this makes learning very, very personal. So they're introduced to four parenting styles and the impact of each um, and the impact it could have on that child's development. Now in another lesson on the impact of childcare and daycare on children, students are tasked to debate one side or the other pro or con for daycare or childcare. So students learn it's important for parents to choose quality childcare and stay involved. Um, the basic infant care curriculum will show and include many lessons on caregiving skills that parents need to have when caring for an infant. Um, students learn how to provide a safe environment in order to have a positive impact on the growth and development of their child. And similarly, in our choking and CPR infant curricula, we talk about key safety skills parents should know to ensure that they can provide a safe environment. 
Now, for the late adulthood stage of human growth and development, we have um, some geriatric and common aging curriculum and lesson available to you as well. It talks about all about the impact of aging on many aspects of human growth and development. Um, the curriculum that comes along with our geriatric simulator that you have access to talks about um, all of the different things that you see here um, on the screen, common conditions of aging. So there's a tons of content that you have available all across the lifespan. Now here's a lesson idea um, if you want to give students some at-home simulation experiences that will teach um, what it's like to have sensory and full body um, challenges. So for instance, for arthritis, you could have students wear uh, thick gloves while trying to write, tie their shoe or button a shirt to simulate um, uh, dexterity um, not working so well or arthritis, or they could wear thinner gloves while trying to open a pill bottle or open a jar. Uh, common impairments um, like arthritis, loss of dexterity, and restricted range of motion can be felt by either wearing gloves or, or even uh, taping fingers together. Another thing you could do is for eyes or a visual impairment, you could take some cheap glasses and smear them with soap or Vaseline and that can stimulate cataracts. Or you could, make, uh, you could have students wear glasses of the wrong prescription or wear sunglasses indoors to simulate things like macular degeneration or glaucoma. Or for a full body aging experience, you could have your students try to breathe only through a straw while they're wearing things like ankle weights, ease bandages, back braces, if they have access to things like canes or walkers. Anything that can simulate a mobility challenge will present things like fatigue, loss of strength, and restricted range of motion. So, but even something as simple as only breathing through a straw for a minute or two makes it very, very difficult. And they could see what it's like to have COPD or emphysema. Now here are a few additional resources and places you can go to find free resources uh, for lessons on human growth and development. A uh, discovery education was one that came up when I looked. Um, Pinterest has just a ton of stuff if you're into Pinterest. Um, we also have a blog, RealityWorks um, has a blog and we have guest writers and we have updates. Um, on a weekly basis. So you could also check out our blog and many times we include a lesson activities and information. So now what? <laughs> we have talked for a good half hour, giving you all sorts of lessons, uh, access to content and ideas and so forth. So I guess I would just uh, start small. Take a lesson or uh, an idea that maybe resonated with you, give it a try or go out to the link that I shared and dig into some of the lessons that you're in, in uh, resources that you're not familiar with. You might find some lessons you can post immediately online uh, to use with your students. Um, we also have other free facts webinars that we have archived at the link that you see on the screen in front of you. So you could click on there and you could uh, sign up for more upcoming webinars. And we also have several that we've recently um, done and we have archived there as well. So at this point, I would turn it back over to Emily to answer any questions that we might have on any of the content that we covered today. Yeah, Denise, so I have a lot of questions on how will they have access to this, the links and the slideshow? Okay, after um, we wrap up here today, you will be getting an email from us um, with a, re a link that's of uh, the recorded webinar. You will also be getting a certificate of attendance that you could use for professional development. And we will also be providing that link one more time for you. And when you go to that link, you click on it, you can scroll down to facts, um, specific area on the link, and it will list all the products we have. And it could be pregnancy simulation, it might be fetal development kit, it could be real care baby. But once you click on the product, it will bring it will give you access to all the lessons and the content that go with that product. It doesn't matter that you don't have that product of ours. We, um, as, a, caller. as a response to the coronavirus, we've given um, teachers access um, for upcoming months to everything we have. So that's what you'll get after our um, webinar today. Also for our curriculum, do we have, um, where can they have access to our curriculum outlines? On our website, if you um, um, look under um, products, there's a specific place on our website for facts related products. And if you go on the product page, there's always a tab that says curricular curriculum overview, and you can click on it and it will give you more detail on the lessons and the content and the objectives in each of those lessons. 
Perfect. And then how long will they have access to the webinar and the links um, and also the COVID-19 resources? I think, I believe it's the end of June right now. We wanted to make sure that people had plenty of time to use it all through the end of this school year for sure. Perfect. Any other questions, Emily? Um, no, just the, uh, could you go back to the slide with the COVID-19 resources where they can, yeah. Yes, I will go back to that slide. Um, there we go. Yep, here's that link. And this will, again, will give you access to all of our curricula, but also you will have access to what uh, product um, guides. And if you have any anatomical uh, anat and physiology lessons, um, we have guides that have um, parts identification for any of our um, anatomical models. So if you have that kind of a, of a need, um, you also have access to that type of information. Oh, uh, we do have a question. Do you have any suggestions on disinfecting the real care babies when, we get, when they get to use them again? Um, simply what, you, what you're doing mostly in, in your everyday life, if you have um, sanitary, um, the, um, I'm blanking on the, the types of wipes, you know, the um, Lysol. Yeah, those types of wipes. Um, you just wipe them, wipe them, wipe them down. And you, typically instructors will also, you know, wash the clothes in between and things like that. But if you wipe those babies down and then put them in the box, many times wrapped in a plastic bag, they will be ready to go and sanitized. Perfect. It looks like that is all of our questions for today. As Denise mentioned, we will be sending out all of the links and to the recording and a certificate of completion um, within 24 hours of this presentation. So thank you for joining us today um, and everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you.